Okay, this is our second podcast of Unit 4. I'm on the bottom of the two, number two, second two. Some definitions, what we're going to be using for the rest of this unit. Nuclear charge, just what it sounds like. Charge on the nucleus. Nuclear charge, charge in the nucleus. Charge in the nucleus. So remember what's in the nucleus. Protons and positive. Um, protons positive. The neutron, the electrons are make the overall atom neutral, but I'm talking about the nucleus, so the number of the protons is going to be the charge. Now, Z is what you see, and we will start talking about a little bit about an effective charge, and that's like, okay, how much do those electrons, how much of a pull do those protons really have on those electrons? But if it's just kind of talking about the nuclear charge, we're talking about the positive protons. Okay, shielding. This is a lot of words. Read that, sum it up. Okay, shielding electrons are the electrons between the nucleus and the valence, valence electrons. So if I use Bohr model, okay, you have your rings here, full rings. Okay, so these are my valence electrons. These inner shell, so they're also your inner shell, are called your shielding electrons. And so look at this is the positive, here's the negative. So they're like throwing up a block. Um, and when you have shielding, if you go to a concert, and let's say you're in the very back row and it's not on a hill, you're not going to see as well because all the people in front of you are shielding you from the, they're shielding you from the actually seeing the concert. Um, you go shopping oh my gosh, Black Friday, and there's that shirt you want, and there's all the other people grabbing it, and if you can't reach it, you're being shielded. Okay, that's what the electrons are doing. So when we talk about shielding, we're talking about those inner shell electrons. Okay, main group elements. Again, I'm going to use this. Most of our trends, we're going to look at the main group elements. Three different ways of thinking of it. Just get it straight in your head. They can be just your S and P blocks. They're your group A's, if you look on your periodic table. And the other looking at it, S&P blocks, okay, group A elements, or other words, all the elements other than your transition metals as you're going through them. Okay, definition, you graph these, and so you kind of start to see these trends. So again, the definition of a radius, the official definition is they're saying, okay, if I have two joints because there's a little bit of pull, that the official definition is the half the dif distance between two identical joined. Well, you know what? You just know a radius is this. It's size. Just think of it. It's perfectly fine to think radius like the size of a ball. And the larger the radius, the larger it's going to be. So let's look at those trends that you already graphed. Again, this is wordy. You can sum it up. That's part of the notes. Periodic trends. This means going across a period. That's what it means by periodic trends, going across a period. Look at what happens. You're getting more positives in the nucleus. Okay? But also as you're going, you're getting more electrons, but they're going into the same energy level because they're all going 2p, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4. So what happens, there's a force pulling it in because they're feeling, all feeling the attraction, so they get closer. So what happens you go across the period, they get smaller. They get smaller because they're able to feel more of the protons as you go across the period. Okay, well, as you go down a group then, so group trends is saying, okay, what happens as I go down a group? Well, as we go down a group, look at what happens. These are going into a 1s. Then you go into a 2s. Then you go into a 3s. Now remember, as you go 1s, this is a 1s. Then this, and this is, I'm just writing half the shell. I'm, this would be a 2s, 3s. So what's happening each time you add, we look at those outer electrons, they're being further and further away. So your size gets larger as you go down a group. Also, look at what happens. You get more shielding, and the more shielding, they're blocking these electrons from filling the positive protons, so you get more shielding. Therefore, they don't feel that strong attraction, and you're going to see the atoms get bigger as you go down a group. Okay, transition out elements. Again, you're going to see the same general trend. There's a little bit of blips. And we're not going to worry about the blips at this level. So. Just still know you can look across a period, you're going to see them getting smaller, going down a group, they're going to be getting bigger. We're not going to stress a whole lot because what's going on, there's not as much shielding and you get with those Ds, they start doing some different things. 
Okay, so where you kind of see those questions, types of questions, you have this, you need your periodic table out, and this is why I put one right there. We have to compete, we have to compare to say, okay, which one's going to win? So to do that, you just look at it on the periodic table. You find them, okay? So 10 and strontium. So here's 10, okay? So you find it on periodic table. Here's 10, okay? Here's strontium, largest. Remember, they get smaller as they go across because you're adding it. So this is my smallest right here. Helium is going to be my smallest. Francium is going to be your biggest. This is going to be the smallest. This is going to be the biggest. So they get smaller, but I asked which one's bigger. Well, strontium is going to be bigger. Okay, sodium, rubidium. So this one's looking at a group because here's sodium, here's rubidium. They get bigger as you go down because they're going into a higher energy level. So that means rubidium is going to be bigger. So what do I have next? I have arsenic. And this is where sometimes even on these quizzes, having a white marker or a dry erase marker helps. I have arsenic, I have nitrogen, I have fluorine. So now you have to compare, you have both trends. Well, they get smaller this way, but bigger this way. So the biggest is going to be arsenic going through that. Okay, you, I'm going to leave you D and E, and we can just start with those tomorrow then as you're going through it. But we're not done with the podcast, so don't shut me down yet. But I want you to work on those, and we'll see what you got on those answers, I'm doing the same thing. Okay, this graph should look familiar. This is, looks similar to the graphs that you made, and what's it showing? Look at, you're going down a group, they get bigger, going across a period, they're getting smaller. And that's what you should have recognized from your, when you were looking at it. Okay, and again, here's the definition of visual. Look at, here's my smallest, here's the biggest. So you get smaller across the period, you get bigger as you go down. Okay, ionic. Remember, ionic means a charged particle. Okay, charged particle. So what happens, again, a cation. Remember, cation is positive. Why are they positive? Because they lost electrons. And you know what? This is something that's actually going to not be opposite in chemistry. So what happens, you would now have more protons than electrons. Because you've lost electrons, so you have more positive protons, so there's a greater attraction, so it's going to make it smaller. So what that would mean, so if I have calcium, let's say, be this size. If I have calcium plus two, it's lost two electrons. So in calcium, it would be 20 protons and 20 electrons neutral. But over here, you've got still the 20 protons because that hasn't changed, but now only 18 electrons. So calcium ion is going to be smaller. So the ion is smaller than its parent. Okay, well, what happens then in the negative? Remember, anion, this is because it's gained electrons. Well, now if you've gained electrons, again, this is a big official definition, sum it up, sum it up. What is this saying is now you have more electrons than protons, so they can't pull them in as tight, so it's going to get bigger. So if I have a nitrogen, if you look at nitrogen, normally seven protons and seven electrons. When it makes a nitrogen negative three, you still have the seven protons, but now you're going to have 10 electrons. So if it's this big, it's going to be coming, well, actually, it should really be about this big, because then what happens? It becomes this big. It gets bigger when you are doing that. Okay, look at the sizes here. So look at everything. Remember, all the metals become positive. So they're positive. Their ion is going to be bigger. So here's the ion down here. Here's the neutral. Okay, look at the non. They get bigger. They get bigger. And then as you look at, you still see the same trends. You still see the same trends that if you're comparing ions, they're going to get smaller. I won't ask you to compare a positive to a negative. We won't make those comparisons looking through that. And just know the more you lose, the smaller you're going to get. The more you gain, the bigger you're going to get. Okay, so you have some questions down there. Look at A. Um, this is a good summary. Okay, radius is smaller for the cation than the parent. It's larger for the anion. And then again, you see the same trends. Okay, so this. Arsenic minus 3. Arsenic. and But I'm asking you larger. Okay, that's going to be larger. 
How about if I have an iron plus three, iron plus two, which one's going to be larger? And that's where you have to just kind of get it straight in your head. Well, this is going to be smaller because it lost, so therefore this is the larger one. And that's the tricky thing on these trends. You just have to make sure what I'm asking as you're going through it. Okay, C and D, I'm going to leave for you. You can also do C and D. Okay, ionization energy. That was another energy that you or trend that you graphed. That's the energy to remove one electron. And all of these definitions, ionization energy, atomic radius, you need to know them. Okay, ionization energy, energy to make an ion. Okay, get it to where it's simpler. Energy to make, okay, a cation. Okay, energy to make a cation, which means then you are removing an electron. This is just, we're going to start seeing things in chemi chemistry speak. In chemistry speak, this is what it's going to look like. Sodium, it's going to be taking some energy. It's endothermic. It needs that energy. It's a positive energy needed. You form a sodium ion, and this electron is going to be free. We're going to realize that this, so this electron is going to actually go to an anion then. So this is how that equation would look. So it says write the equation. This is the equation. So what happens as you go across the period? Well, same reason as sizes, okay? You have the positives, the negatives are going onto the same, electrons are going out of the same energy. They're being pulled tighter, they're smaller. Well, if they're being pulled tighter, it's gonna take more energy to remove them. So your um, ionization energy, you see an increase in the ionization energy because they're getting smaller there's greater attraction between it so it's going to take more energy to remove that electron okay but down a group as you go down a group well remember we said these electrons are getting further and further away there's more shielding the electrons are further away so what happens they're easier to remove so since they're easier to remove, that means it does not take as much energy. The ionization energy decreases as you go down a group. And arrows won't get you, they'll maybe get you a C on the test. You need to know the reasoning behind it. So don't just memorize arrows. We're not just memorizing the trend. We need to know the why of the trend going through it. Okay, again, transition um, elements, you again see some weird shielding going on it's opposite but you know what i'm not going to test you on this i'm not going to put in you're still going to use the ionization transition um, elements just ignore keep to the trend keep to the trend okay so same thing lowest first ionization energy as you're looking at this nitrogen or oxygen well, you've got to find them on the periodic table here's nitrogen so the lower first ionization energy this means that oxygen is going to take more energy so therefore nitrogen has a lower it's easier to remove so if you look which elements have the highest LM ionization energy noble gases have the highest and that should hopefully make sense they all have full shell of electrons there's no way you're stealing their electrons it's going to take a lot of energy to remove that look at your noble your alkalis they want to get rid of one. They really, really want to get rid of that one to have it like a noble gas. So therefore, they don't require as much energy. So they have the lowest ionization energy. So between neon and fluorine. Well, neon has the highest because it's a noble gas. So fluorine is still pretty high, but it's going to be less than the neon. Okay, how about fluorine and chlorine? Well, chlorine's electrons are a little bit further away from its protons. So therefore, it's going to take... Um, it's a little easier to remove that. It's still pretty hard, but it's going to be a little bit easier. So chlorines is less than the fluorines. So you see a increase in ionization energy as you go across the period. And again, these no last two, notice I'm leaving them for you. So you see an increase as you go across the period, and you see a decrease in the ionization energy as you go down the group. Transition metals, okay, yeah, but you know what? Don't worry about this. Don't worry about the blips. We're not going to worry about the exceptions at this level. Okay? Just know what happens, but go ahead and treat everything the same. We'll talk more about the exceptions if you decide to take a AP chemistry um, and go on to a little higher level. Okay, and again, arrows work. Yay, they're awesome. But arrows aren't going to help you understand because I'm going to ask you the why. Why, 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 why? And so look at these are your smallest, and this is your largest atom, okay? Then they're opposite. So the smaller the atom, the higher the ionization energy. The bigger the atom, 
the easier it is to remove, the lower the ionization energy. Now, down at the bottom, those ions and talking about different formations, um, we'll talk about that together in class. We will see you tomorrow.